Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Project Lightning Talk for Argo CD. Um, so we're going to talk about what's new and what's next for Argo CD version 3.0. Before we get started, a quick introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Nitesh. I work at Acuity as a software engineer. I'm also an Argo CD maintainer. Uh, I'm a CNCF ambassador, and uh, I did my Linux Foundation mentorship program with Kubernetes Project a couple of years ago. And in case you want to get connected with me, you can connect with me uh, at any platform. Uh, the tag is Nitesh Vai. Let's get started now. So Argo CD version 3.0 and Argo CD version 3.1, which got released yesterday, August Fourth, actually, um, it marks. So the 3.0 version, 3.1 got released uh, August 4, and we're going to talk about what are the features or bug fixes that were introduced in Argo uh, CD version 3.0 and 3.1. So uh, 3.0 actually uh, represents the first major release since 2021, uh, and before that, we used to have like 2.0. 7, 2.8, 2.14, things like that version. And this specific version came with a lot of things like feature uh, request, bug fixes, and uh, one of the key features that was a part of this uh, that was a part of this version was um, OCI support. Then we also worked on adding uh, something like uh, kubectl plugin mechanism and things like that. So let's quickly take a look at these features and bug fixes for that. So uh, the first and the major feature that I want to highlight and that got merged in 3.1 is basically the OCI support. So now Argo CD eventually supports your OCI compliant container registries as a source for your configuration artifacts. So let's say that you have your um, application artifact, you push it to your OCI registry, um, Argo CD now can basically take a look and sync your application based on that. That's the first uh, major feature that's a part of the Argo CD. Uh, huge shout out to Blake from Acuity who eventually worked on this feature. The second feature was basically about the hydrator improvements. I'm, I don't know how many of you know about the hydrator stuff already, but hydration is generally a mechanism of pushing your uh, rendered manifest that you generally get from customization or your uh, Helm charts and push it back, back to Git repository so you can see which manifest are getting applied. Uh, so now the hydrator eventually allows for a way to associate a dry commit with a code commit. You can generally do that by adding your information about the repository URL that the Situation is going to map to, or basically going to take a look at the commit SHA, like the commit hash you want to basically attach it to, and then the author of that commit, along with an optional message if you want to. Uh, the another feature that was introduced was a kubectl plugin mechanism. So now, just like how you have kubectl plugin mechanism, uh, like that can introduce your own subcommands for kubectl. Argo CD has it for the. Um, Argo CD CLI tool too. Uh, I'm presenting the same talk about this feature since I built that feature for the project. Uh, if you are curious about how that feature works, make sure you come to the talk that's happening at 2 p.m. Uh, well, we can discuss that at the last. Uh, other more features that I've uh, personally, one of my favorites are like uh, fine-grained RBAC informant, enforcement. So generally what happens with fine-grained control is that it has now introduced the ability to change permissions of deletions based on not just the application, but based on specific resources. So let's say that you have an Argo CD application. You can eventually set some RBAC permissions like who can delete these application. Now with the fine-grained controls, you can eventually even set who can delete these specific resources within these applications. Then another, three, uh, then another feature that was introduced was resource tracking annotation. Um, it was done by Michael Crenshaw from Intuit, so huge shout out to him as well, uh, regarding the hydrator manifest pattern too. Um, so now Argo CD eventually can be used to keep track of the resources it's managing by either using those annotations or, uh, or basically labels or using annotation plus labels. So it has this annotation called as tracking ID, the label is called as instance, like argocd.argoproject.io slash instance. And if you want, if Argo CD wants to keep track of a specific resource, it can add eventually both the annotation and the label. So it just make sure it's used to do, do that all sort of stuff internally so that Argo CD can keep track of, okay, these are the resources that I need to manage for an application in order to make it deploy to the cluster. And last feature that I personally like is ability is, is the ability to exclude files using Git file generator. 
So with the help of Git generator, you initially had, you can initially exclude directories because when you are using Git directory generator, and when you are using Git file generator, you could only include files. But now with the 3.1 version getting out, we can also you know exclude files when you're using the Git file generator. So contributions are welcome to the project. If you're interested, we would highly uh, love to see your contributions to the project. Uh, you can join the Argo CD channel on the CNCF flag. You can come and say hi at the Argo CD booth, Argo project booth that's in the project pavilion space. And before you go, uh, just want to mention that uh, this is a book that was writ written by Christian Hernandez and Andrew Block, who are the Argo CD maintainers. So you probably can scan this QR code uh, and download this book if, in case you are interested to. And that's the general updates for Argo CD project for version 3.0 and 3.1. Thank you, and I'll see you at the Argo booth.